Hello everyone. It is Thursday at two o'clock. We are not doing our normal um, Tuesday at two because we this is a reschedule from last week. It's nice to see everyone signing on. I hope that you are having a good week so far. I hope everyone is maybe swinging into some new normal. Uh, new York City went into phase two of the reopening, so it's feeling like things might be getting back to normal around here. And it's been a very amazing week to watch uh, how our country is going to change. I know it's gonna change and um, I feel very, very encouraged by that. Hey, Todd Boston. Hey, Chris. It's so nice to see everyone. Um, delightful. So today I have a guest, someone who I have featured a bunch of times here, um, both on my podcast and on my blog. And I was lucky enough to get this amazing human to also participate in my labs. He was one of the three teachers in the cyber PR uh, lab, which had to do with Spotify. In my opinion, Mike is one of the smartest and freshest voices adding so much to the artist community. Um, so if you don't know him, I'm so excited that I will get to introduce him to you um, today. And if you do know him, you know that you're in for an incredible treat because he is so knowledgeable and so great. So I'm going to invite him to the stream. And while he's coming on, um, let you all know that you should get your pens out. Hi. Hi, Ariel. How Look, are you? Your shades are open. I've been watching all your videos and I'm used to it being, seeing it closed. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's too nice to sit here in, in the dark anymore. You know, I've got to let some sunshine in. Agree. We'll let this, we'll let this IG live be known as the, uh, the shade edition. <laughs> Yeah, look, it's, um, I mean, there's not many options when we're all doing this from home. You've either got the bed in the background <laughs> or the couch. Yep. Um, in this case, you've got the shades. There you go. So yeah. I'm delighted to have you here today. I want to get right into it. I did a very short introduction just basically saying that we've spent a few uh, sessions together, but I would love for you to introduce yourself and let us know what you've been up to. Wow. Um, let me try and think of the short, short version. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is always a challenge. I, I guess that the, the really short version is independent artists. Uh, spent a lot of time learning about the world of playlists and making a lot of mistakes and taking notes and turning those notes into detailed emails and eventually into a book work hard, playlist hard. Um, obviously learned a lot along the way and just here to share what I've learned and uh, hopefully save people some pain, some time. And um, yeah, I, I just encourage people to ask questions, don't be shy. And you know, I can see the feed going right now. I'm blown away by the numbers in here. So um, thank you for this opportunity. Pleasure is mine. So Mike's book, Work Hard, Playlist Hard, is a precursor to a new course that he's rolling out right now. I've been watching many of your sessions, and I'm really loving the way that you've presented the information. Um, and I will post all of this on my blog if you're interested in taking the course with Mike. Um, let's dive in and start with Spotify, which was sort of the promise of today, even though I would also love to, to touch on Amazon and many other in, in this short time. Oh, sorry. So the name of Mike's book is Work Hard, Playlist Hard, and you can find it on Amazon. Um, okay, so Spotify. Spotify for independent musicians, I think it's no secret at this point that there is really um, 
there's two Spotify's, right? There's the Spotify for artists that are signed and have access to people that work at Spotify and curation teams at Spotify. And then there's Spotify for the rest of us. And I love to start this, Mike, if you could walk artists through, I still find a lot of clients that we work with and artists who I talk to on a, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, they still don't know how to submit their music in Spotify. So would you like to take us through a very quick general first steps to take on Spotify to submit your music to the actual Spotify playlisters? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, number one, we're assuming that you've finished your music, you've uploaded it to your distributor, or if you work with a label or someone else, they've set it up and set a date in the future that it will come out on Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, everywhere else. Uh, once you have that in place, usually a few days after they have uploaded the song, uh, you would go into Spotify for Artists. And if you haven't signed up yet, get on it immediately, artists.spotify.com. It's free. Um, once you are in there, in your dashboard, you will see upcoming releases. And sometimes you might click music and then upcoming. But either way, it's usually right there at the very top. Just that's, that, that beer looks nice, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah. I wish it was beer. <laughs> a pint, a pint of coffee. I like it. Um, so you see the option to submit upcoming music. And when you do that, it will take you to a form. Now, the form will ask you multiple things about the song. And if, it, if you have an album coming out, it will force you to pick one song. So you, the focus here is on one song that is coming out. And they will say, what is the mood? What is the genre? What instruments are used? Um, you know, where is, you know, where would this song most resonate with people from? You know, are you proudly born and raised in New York City? And will this most resonate with people from New York? Uh, you know, do you live in Jakarta? Will this be more likely to resonate with people in Indonesia? And once you start to put in that information, the, the next page is where you can add a small pitch, if you will. And I always say, if you don't have a marketing budget, that's fine. You don't need to talk about, uh, you don't need to make things up and try and make it sound like you're going to get billboards in Times Square or anything like that. Uh, what I've seen that has worked for myself with my music and other artists is just a very well-worded and compelling story about the song. And I suck at writing. Um, believe it or not. So uh, with words, I just, I can't really craft anything that's that compelling and exciting. So what I would do is play the song to a friend who's never heard it before and just say, can you write down a few sentences about how this makes you feel, what you think about when you hear this, and I'll fill in the blanks after that. Um, if you're working, if you're a producer and you're working with a singer songwriter, they're probably really good with words. So ask them, what is this song about in two, two to three sentences? And that could be your pitch. You don't need to mention anything about marketing if you have no marketing budget. You're an independent artist. You're not expected to have that. Um, so in this form, you've filled out all of that information. You've tagged the song, which is great. You've submitted it for editorial which is great because it will get to the right people and hopefully get listened to and considered for placement. Uh, to give you an idea, a lot of people are saying in the US, there's roughly 40,000 songs that are being uploaded to Spotify every day. And that makes a lot of people just say, then why, why should I bother, bother doing this? And I, I say, not for, there's definitely not 40,000 people that are following this process because they say it's too hard or it won't work or... Uh, they don't know how or they forgot or whatever. Uh, I can tell you that I've done it for, since they launched it, it would be about five songs. Two songs have been placed in editorial. And that's, you know, that's two songs that wouldn't have got placed if this process wasn't followed. And it's simply filling out that form. It takes less than five minutes. The other thing, even if you don't get placed in editorial as a result of following the submission form if you submit at least seven days prior and it's an original song 
it will go into release radar for all of your followers. So if you have 600 followers, 600 release radars on Friday. Uh, the other thing is, let's say you don't get editorial, uh, but you did tag the song really well with the genre, the mood, uh, the, the vocal type, uh, where the song originates from. You may see that 10 to 12 weeks after release, that song could end up in Discover Weekly. And as many people have discovered, especially this year, I feel, Discover Weekly has actually delivered more streams than Release Radar and even more streams than some editorial playlists. So, you know, that you've really, you've, you've given yourself multiple opportunities just by filling out that form and it's free. It's not going to cost you anything other than five minutes of your time. So for those of you who are just tuning in, we're talking about submitting your music to Spotify directly through artist.spotify.com. Um, if that was confusing, you can watch this replay. Also, Spotify has done an amazing job curating little video vignettes, which will walk you through exactly how to do all of this. If you're still stuck on writing the pitch that Mike just very brilliantly uh, gave some great ideas about what to do. We also wrote a blog post, um, which you can find at cyberprmusic.com. Mike contributed, and we talk all about how to create a compelling pitch for Spotify playlisters, which of course, after you've submitted to Spotify, you can also use for any playlisters that you may want to be pitching to. Okay, so that is, someone just said, how can you make your form stand out for Spotify? What should you put? I think you covered it really well. You should put anything interesting and special about the instrumentation, where you're from, if there's a mood that you feel people should be capturing. And then in your pitch, you wanna make sure your pitch is compelling and interesting. We've talked about pitches a lot on these um, IG Lives. I actually just had the pitch girl, Laura Allen, on yesterday. Um, so we, we, we did cover in that and have in many places around my blog. When you're pitching, make sure that you talk about evoking a feeling or how you want people to feel. I think just saying it's folky rock or using too many general words that are genres of music is not the best approach. Okay, so we've got our Spotify track. We've selected it. We've sent it off to the Spotify playlisters. We're going to get in everyone's release radar as a result. What is my next step, Mike? Um, I've got my song coming, let's say, in, in a week or so. Shall we get into some pre-save knowledge? Sure, we can do that. Um... You know, a quick introduction to pre-saves and pre-ads and, and all of the pre's out there that everyone is hearing about and seeing. Um, I always say for those of us that have been around a little longer, let's say, and remember the days of going into a record store and writing on a, on a bag or a piece of paper your phone number and saying, as soon as this album comes out, I want you to put that CD in this bag, call this number and tell me, I, I'm, I've already paid for it. I just want to come and collect it. Uh, that translated into day one sales, which then translated into charts, such as your billboard charts. Uh, the very same happened with iTunes after that. Artists would start doing pre-orders because what would happen is if you have 250 pre-orders on iTunes, the second that release goes live, 250 people have already purchased it. You shoot up to number one on the charts uh, for at least an hour, <laughs> long enough to take a screen grab and have bragging rights, but you, you still got that. Uh, and now with iTunes, obviously, slowly um, transitioning out, uh, it is still available in the new music app, but you have to turn it on in settings. Um, you know, the focus now is on pre-saves and pre-ads, which doesn't cost you any money. It just costs you a few clicks. And what this does is basically says to the DSPs, Spotify, Apple, et cetera, uh, X number of people really like this song so much so that they wanted to have it in their collection as soon as it was available. So they've saved it, which 
is the same as saying I would put down a dollar to buy this or I would put down ten dollars to buy this in a store and that can really help with decision making when it comes to should we put this song in front of more people should we put it into some of these discovery playlists should we not only include it in release radar for their followers but should we start to feed it into other people's release radars uh, to see if they like the song as well and i want to stop you there because i want to yeah. really hear what he's saying here so for everyone who has this dialogue in their head that like Spotify is some magical thing, and it's funny, I just saw a question go by, which is how much money do I need to pay to get someone in Spotify to rep me? No, 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 no. Don't, don't think about that. That, yes, you can do that, but no. <laughs> this is what you have to do. It is your job to invite your people. And it's okay if there's only 10, 20, 30, 40 of your people. I think... A huge problem that we're up against is we begin to think that everyone should have a million streams, or a million followers, 100,000. You don't need huge numbers, right? So what you want to do is your goal is to get just 10 of your friends, 10 people that you can text, 20, 30, whatever your number is. Start small. You have to get a Spotify pre-save link, which you can get through CD Baby. You can get it through DistroKid. You can, there's plenty of services, marketing tools and services that will give you a Spotify pre-save link for very little or no money, depending on your distributor. You send that little link out to all of your fans. This is why having a mailing list is so important, but you can also text that link. You can put that link on your social media. You can tweet it. You can make a Instagram tile and make it a swipe up in a story, plenty of things to do. And what you want to do is have your fans click on that link, pre-save your track before it's coming out. And the reason for this is what Mike just said is so key. The curators and the people and the computers, let's face it, a lot of what's happening at Spotify is not humans looking at this stuff. So your job is to shock the Spotify algorithm just a little bit so that if 50 or 100 people save your track, Spotify notices on the day it comes out that 100 people went and played your track. This gives you a bump. You're shocking the Spotify algorithm. And by doing that, you have the potential to get into even more Spotify playlists. So this is huge. This is very inexpensive. All it takes is a little elbow grease. Um, there's a couple of artists that I've worked with uh, that are even here on this stream today. And I've seen some of them. They just texted all of their people uh, in their phones. Hey, click this link. Please save my next track. And explain to your fans, when you do this, it makes a huge difference for me. So you want to educate them. Um, so, so someone is just asking, Mike, is it just for a track or is a pre-save link for a full release? You could do pre-saves for an album. Absolutely. And a, an extra value add on that, as you mentioned, if you distribute with DistroKid, CD Baby, most of the distributors will give you an option to create pre-save links. Some will also allow you to add extra features within that link, such as not only do you want to pre-save this album or this song, but do you want to also follow this artist, which is great because then you're now going to hit their release radar as well. Uh, so even if they don't look in their albums or their saved hearts, whatever the section is going to be called tomorrow, um, at least it will also be served to them in their release radar and they will play it there, even though it's also saved in their library. So it's just two ways to reach them. Um, I wanted to mention, uh, and I just a quick look into how things are changing with Amazon Music. You can actually, anyone that has an Alexa device in their house can pre-save songs with their Alexa device by interacting with it and get a notification the day the song is released. Uh, the other thing about that is you can follow an artist. So I, I believe the phrase is Alexa, follow artist X on Amazon Music and what happens on a release day when there's a new song from that artist, the rings on your Amazon Echo device will change to a different color saying that you have a notification and we'll talk back to you and ask you if you would like to play that song. 
So you're actually getting directly into people's homes and into their smart speaker, their, their voice enabled devices. So it's, um, what I like about that as well is it's really easy to post on your Instagram story and say, do you have an Alexa device in your home? Simply say, Alexa, follow artist X on Amazon music. Done. People love trying that. And I'm sorry for everyone's Alexa devices that are going off right now. I'll stop <laughs> saying Alexa I have not after I say Alexa one more time. It would be joining the, the stream. We have a good question here. Yeah. Uh, so I understand that if you choose iTunes to pre-sale, you need to choose just one. Can you do both iTunes and Spotify pre-save without cannibalizing the numbers on one platform or the other? Yeah, most of them have an option where, because you, you, you would never force your, um, force is a strong word, but you would never say to your fans, only listen to my music on Spotify if they're all subscribed to Apple Music. And um, a lot of people are getting these accounts complimentary. So you buy a new Apple Mac, you get Apple Music for, for one year or, or whatever it is. Uh, you might be added to somebody's Spotify family plan. So you choose to listen to Spotify. So always give your fans, your followers, all of the options that you can. And most of these pre-save links will have uh, and the wording is different for each of these services. So Spotify, it's pre-save. Apple Music, it's pre-add. Um, and they'll have different options as well. I believe with Apple Music and maybe Deezer, you can actually also choose to pre-add that song into your playlist. So if you have a gym playlist for yourself that you, is, is in your own personal account, you can say, add this song to my gym playlist. And then the next... As soon as that song is available, it will appear in your playlist for you. Uh, so some people have a gym playlist or a driving playlist, a, a playlist when they go on a walk, um, and you've just made it even easier for them. They can totally forget about it. And then once that song is live, it's in their playlist already. Very cool. Um, Jersey Girl Music asks, how do live tracks fare in this whole system that you're talking about? Okay, so recorded live with potentially an, an audience in the background versus being recorded in a, in a studio, I'm, I'm assuming? Yeah. Um, you know what? I think it really depends on the genre and it, it depends on the listener. I personally, if it's really well recorded and there's, there's some clapping and applauding at the start and things like that, totally fine. Uh, it, it obviously has to be recorded well and probably sent to an engineer to get a, a, at least a, some level of a mix down and a master so that it sounds right amongst other tracks in the playlist. Uh, you don't want the volume to be too, too far up or down. <laughs> um, it, you don't want people reaching for the dial to change the volume when your track comes on. Um, I would but, also just want to jump in here. If, if you're like a jam band or you're on the road all the time and you're a folk artist and live is your genre and your, your way of really getting your, your music across or you've re-recorded something that's a little older because you want to breathe some new air into it and you've made a live version, absolutely, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. And it's something we do advocate around here at Cyber PR. A lot of artists come to us and they've had a track that's been really successful but they feel like it's run its course totally you can record a live version but definitely do what mike says and, and get it make sure it sounds ready to go when it's lined up against other spotify tracks um and just to add to that as well um piano tracks if if you, if it's a solo piano track and it's recorded live totally fine people love hearing the sound of the keys being hit um <laughs> yeah you know they want they want it to broom actually um, playing for and performing as well yeah yeah or if there is like a moment you know where people are clapping or excited that that adds yeah. to the song um okay um amber honey asks from when you load up the new track to a digital distributor to pre-saves on streaming um what is the length of time that you should um be looking at before the release day of that song i I like to always give myself time in case something goes wrong. Yeah. And you, know, you, up, you upload it, the artwork doesn't look right, the title isn't right. You realize that 
the the final mix was actually not the final mix because you have a hundred final mixes. Um, so I'd say it's cutting it close, but if you upload, if you were to upload a song today and make the release date two weeks from now, you're probably going to be okay. But if you are asking me, I would say give yourself four weeks. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is, you know, obviously if something goes wrong, that's one. If you've never released a song from that artist before, you have time to go to your distributor. Once again, DistroKid, CD Baby, send them an email and say, hey, I've got my first song coming out with this artist project. Uh, so the artist doesn't have a Spotify profile yet. Can you please give me the link to the Spotify artist profile so that I can request access to Spotify for artists now before that first song comes out? Right. And with most of them, it could take up to a week for them to get that back to you. And then when you put in the request, usually a few more days. Um, outside of that, obviously with the submission process, the more time you give, the better. So when we're talking about submitting within Spotify for artists for that editorial consideration, yes, they say that it has to be at least seven days before release date. But if you give them 21 days, it just gives there's an opportunity for more people to listen to it. It could get passed around. It could get sent to other teams. Uh, it, it's not always the case that the first person that listens is going to say, yes, I want to place this, but they may hear it and they may share it with a few other people. So giving them the time to do that is definitely worthwhile. Um, I know that I don't quote me on this, but, at least a few years ago for an iTunes uh, homepage takeover, there would be roughly four weeks lead time that they would need to actually lock in that date, uh, create artwork specifically for iTunes and um, have everything else in place so that they could feature that song. So if artists didn't give them at least four weeks, they've already missed the opportunity to be featured in the iTunes store. Right. Uh, you know, and, and I've had people say, oh, what about Beyonce who drops a track overnight? And I would say, <laughs> yeah, guess what? The track looks like it dropped overnight. It was actually recorded one year ago and they've spent six months planning and right. it, you're, it's, it's meant to look like it dropped overnight. Um, that's excitement. There's, there's, uh, there's but there was a lot of work that went in and a lot of lead time. And there's two Spotify's, Spotify for Beyonce and Spotify. <laughs> let's, let's be real. Yeah. Um, great question here. Um, is it common for curators to charge to be on playlists? If so, what's the typical fee? Uh, don't do it. <laughs> it's, yeah. Look, um, basically, I not all, uh, because this is always changing, but a lot of the people that will ask for payment and say, hey, I'll add your song to my playlist for $100 or whatever they charge, they'll usually take the payment before they've even asked for a link to the song, mm -hmm. which means they don't even need to listen to your song before they place it. You can imagine, I, I'm trying to avoid cursing here because I get so frustrated about this. Um, you can imagine how messy that can get when you look at these playlists and anything goes. They've just tossed multiple genres of songs into a playlist and uh if you ask them what you know if you if you don't know what playlist they are uh, intending to place your song in ask them and take a look and you would be shocked uh, there'll be entire albums dumped in there there'll be genres mashed together uh some of these playlists i've seen are actually named after popular movies and then when you go into the playlist it's clear that these songs were never actually featured in the movie yep. uh, so you have a Disney movie and then you'll go into the playlist so, and there'll be music from Notorious B.I.G. I had going, heard ah. it that got added to a Moana playlist. And it was a horrendous playlist. Yep. Yeah. And the reason for that, just so you know, is I don't know if you've ever tried to play something on Spotify and you found the wrong thing. There's a lot of people that are trying to outsmart the algorithm so that they win plays, which is just, it's really annoying. And yes, don't pay for it. Um, next question. Does it have to be a current track or can I target a piece from the past? The answer is very short for this one. To submit to the Spotify playlisters, it must be something that is not out yet. 
That's correct. And just to add on that, the exception is Pandora. Pandora, uh, submit.pandora.com. Uh, yes, submit.pandora.com. Also, if you go to amp, amp.pandora.com slash submit, I believe they link to the same page now. That will let you submit a song that is already on Pandora. And I believe it goes back one year. So it doesn't have to be your latest release. And, you know, though, if you've released four songs in the last year, jump on there and submit them right now. What people need to know is, yes, your distributor puts music onto Pandora. Yes, it's available within Pandora radio stations and on demand on Pandora Premium, which is similar to Spotify. Um, but that's as far as it goes. There's no one at Pandora that is tagging every single song that comes in. And Pandora is known for that, delivering music based on the listener's taste and doing a really good job at it. Uh, by submitting this form, you're basically saying, hey, someone needs to take a listen to this, tag it accordingly, and give it a shot. And it can lead to editorial placement within their playlists that they have in Pandora Premium. And it can also lead to your song being put on more radio stations with similar artists or specific moods, genres, and being delivered to more people. And the form is even shorter than the form on Spotify for artists. You, I believe you put in the UPC um, and then maybe your name and email address and submit. And then someone at Pandora does the rest. They listen and tag the song accordingly. And they probably do a better job than we would with tagging, it, tagging our own music because they know where it would fit uh, because they listen to music all day. That's what they do. <laughs> listening to music since the 90s. Um, yeah. Another thing about Pandora to know about is they have an amazing program for artists called the AMP program, mm. which is free. And you can record little drops before your music plays. So you can tell a quick little story about, I recorded this in the back of my truck, or I recorded this after I got off the road, or this is a new song, check it out. Please save me on, on Spotify, whatever. You can do like a shout out and attach little audio messages to your tracks for free um, to alert your fans of something you might want them to know about. And it's a wonderful, and it's just Pandora Amp. They've also created a series of wonderful videos you can watch, which will educate you very fast. Um, so someone has a really good question. I'm putting out an EP in the near future in the lo-fi space. What is the best way to go about researching playlists that cater to my genre of music? Cool. I, there's a number of ways, but let me tell you the way that doesn't cost you any money <laughs> because that's important, especially um, for artists in the early stages that haven't necessarily made an income from their music streaming yet. Uh, so I want to make this something that can help everyone. If you go into Spotify, look at artists that are similar to you. And if you, if you can't find any, look at a playlist that you listen to yourself of music that inspires you and start clicking on those artists from there and do this on the computer in the desktop app, I should mention, um, the Spotify app that you download on your computer. But you go to the artist page, then you click about and there'll be a section on the right that says discovered on. These are the top five playlists that are delivering the highest number of monthly listeners for that artist. It won't show you the exact number. They've removed that. But it's safe to say, let's say one of these lo-fi artists that you are following has 100,000 monthly listeners and you look at the top five playlists, whatever is number one, it's safe to say is generating a lot of those listeners for that artist. Now, if it says Spotify under that playlist name, obviously it's Spotify editorial um, and we already know how to submit to them. But if it has another name, sometimes it could be a random series of letters and numbers. Sometimes it's a real person's name. Sometimes it's a brand. You can click on that and it will go to their profile. From there, they've got a profile image. Now, if they use Facebook to sign into Spotify, that image matches their Facebook profile, which is a great starting point. Mm -hmm. If you were to take a screenshot of that image and paste it into Google image search, it's going to match that image uh, as well. 
outside of that, the username at the top of the user profile in Spotify, if you click your mouse on that, hold it down and drag it, it may show you a different username to what is displayed. Uh, so either of those have worked for me as far as trying to find that curator. The other option is copy a link to their playlist and paste it into Google search and then leave a space and type the word Twitter and just see if anyone else has shared that playlist on Twitter. And most of the time, if they know who the curator is, they will tag them and give them a shout out. Uh, you know, it's a little bit of detective work, but a lot of people would give up at that point. So if you can go that extra step, do that little bit of extra research, and then you find that person, you won't be one of hundreds. You might be, you might be one of a much smaller number. So they may actually be more receptive to you because you did a little bit of work to find them. Amazing. Great tips. I cannot believe that 37 minutes has already flown by. We only wow. have a couple more minutes before we're going to get shut off. Mike, please tell us about your new course. Um, I will be sending out a link. Uh, for those of you that are on my email list, you will get a link for the course. Um, if you are not on my email link at list, why? Come over to cyberprmusic.com, get on my email list, um, or you can direct message me or Mike if you want more information about the course. But please, fill us in. I've been loving it, by the way, especially the new Amazon, which uh. I, you, you're really giving a great overview of how musicians can get involved with Amazon as it's rolling out in beta. Thank you. Um, yeah, look, the course, the reason behind the course was that the book, uh, I, a lot of feedback was, hey, you know, what you wrote there was great, but, but I wish I could get a visual of it as well and I could see exactly what you're doing. And I realized that uh, a lot of these things are changing constantly. When the book was first out, Amazon Music for Artists didn't exist yet. Uh, Amazon Music looks a lot different now to what it did back then. Uh, so the course I can update as soon as things change. But more importantly, I'm able to do screen recordings and put screenshots in there and do live streams anytime I feel like it and just to update everyone if something changes because it's always changing. And I really, with the course, I wanted to show everyone the value of number one, getting access to all of these artist tools that most people don't know about all of them and that they're free. Uh, but then showing you how to make the most of them, why it's important to update your artist profile on all of these services, even if it's not available in your country, doesn't mean that you don't have fans in the country that that service is based that could be listening to you, discovering you on there. And you now have a home on that service that welcomes them with open arms and says, I'm paying attention. I'm here as well. Um, so yeah, things that I cover in there, obviously Amazon music for artists, which is very new. I had to go really into detail about the request process to get access. <laughs> I actually got, um, got denied a few times myself. One of them was a, a terrible mistake I made when I was creating the course where I was create, trying to claim Snoop Dogg's profile, but I didn't mean to hit submit at the end. And I did. I'm glad I got denied. <laughs> and, um, you know, if anyone from Snoop's team is watching, I apologize. I didn't mean to press submit and I did. Um, but I learned that from getting denied, I found out why and all the extra steps that you needed to take to get the approval. And uh, approval was actually really quick once I went back and added in that extra information. So Amazon Music for Artists was one and it really gets into once you get access, understanding the voice requests that people didn't even know uh, that they have in there. It will show you how many people request the artist's name from their Alexa device. Mm -hmm. uh, they request the song title or they actually sing or say the words to part of your song and Alexa understands and plays that song. And it will tell you what those requests were. So you could see 100 lyric, lyric requests or 100 song requests. Um, so, that's really exciting and that's something that is definitely unique to Amazon Music right now. Then there's Deezer Backstage as well. Very new. I haven't seen them really 
promoting this yep. anywhere. I don't think, I think they're rolling it out so quietly. So yeah. I recommend getting this course only because getting in on the ground floor is so important when new things are rolling out. You don't want to wait until Deezer makes some huge announcement that goes out over the wire and tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of musicians are trying to get onto the platform. So I love that about your course. I will send a follow-up email again, sign up at cyberpairmusic.com to the newsletter with a link to join the course and a link to buy Mike's fabulous book. We have to go. Um, there's a couple questions we didn't get to answer. I will be posting a replay of this as well as asking Mike really, really nicely to answer the questions that didn't get answered. And I'll post that on the blog post as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Tomorrow, Instagram Live with Matt Pelosi on my team, we have Andrew Southworth, who, when you look on YouTube for music marketing, he is the number one result. He is a genius at Facebook advertising. He'll be on with us tomorrow. I'm back again next Tuesday with Ashley, the founder of Woman Crush Music, and the lovely Kayla on Wednesday with Lauren Bierman, our rock star bio writer. They'll be discussing how to crush your bio. Thank you, Mike. I love talking to you. I could go another hour. Unfortunately, Instagram won't let us. No. Thank and you, Ariel. Thank you so much for your time. Would you say just hit them, hit Mike up on IG if they have extra questions? Yeah, look, um, Instagram, Twitter, it's the same handle. Otherwise, workhardplaylisthard.com, but social media is always good. Slide into the DMs. Anyone's welcome. Any questions are welcome. I'm here to help. Thanks so much. Everybody have a great rest of your day. Thank you.